Before we start today's service, we're going to bless our new service book. The older one was getting older and had writing in it. So it was time in our life together to get a new service book. But as all things, we need to bless them at, at, for God's use as we go forward. And we'll, if you have a small little paper in your hand, it says, Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. All kings shall bow down before him. All nations shall do him service. Let us pray. Bless, o, bless us, O Lord of hosts, as we use this altar book, which we dedicate to your service, and grant that as your saints and angels always serve you in heaven, so we may worship you acceptably on <coughs> earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our service then begins on page 365 of your Book of Common Prayer. Page 365. The red book in front of you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship, mystical body of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Give us to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, glory everlasting. Amen. Let us be seated for this morning's lessons. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive a great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love. 
because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all the beautiful world therein, for it is he who founded it upon the seas, and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep, who can ascend the hill of the Lord, and who can stand in his holy who have clean hands and a pure heart who have not pledged themselves to falsehood nor sworn by what is a fraud they shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation such is the generation of those who seek him of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the, new, and the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and, and the end. The word of the Lord.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Let's try John. <laughs> <laughs> when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and, uh, in spirit and came with her also weeping. He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, Lord, come and see. Oh, so the Jews said, see how he loves him. But some of them said, could not he be, oh, could he not, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man keep this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for he having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a, loud, with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated? I'm sure you know by now that it's All Saints Day. In some time, days, and places, I suppose it's just Time Change Sunday, which gave us all an extra hour of sleep, which is thankful. That's right, in the church today, we celebrate All Saints Day. But actually, it's not really All Saints Day either. All Saints Day is always on November 1st. That's the day after Halloween, All Souls Day. And here we have it. All, Say, All Saints Day is so important to the church, such a special day, that we are allowed to observe All Saints Day on the Sunday after it, if it comes on on uh, Monday, we can have it on Sunday. If it comes on Sunday, we can have it on Sunday. Whatever day it comes on, we can have it. So this allows us the opportunity to celebrate our saints year in and year out. So that is why this year, November 7th, is All Saints Day, all day long. Now the question before us today becomes, what in the world is a saint? Well, according to the Random House College Dictionary, a saint is any of a certain persons of exceptional holiness formally recognized by the Christian body or the Christian church by canonization, a person of great holiness, virtue, or benevolence. St. Teresa, so to speak. All this sounds good, but this definition is perhaps a bit too narrow for me, anyway. Then there is the definition, according to the new dictionary, for Episcopalians. If you're not Episcopalian today, don't worry about it. it. It still fits. The small dictionary tells us, the small dictionary tells us that a saint is honored, is an honored member of the cloud of witnesses to the faith which God has surrounded us as examples of Christian living. 
This is perhaps is better than the first one, but it could be a, a bit less spacey for me so, to help me out understand. So I went further on, and I've said this def definition before, but broader steel, still writes one of my old favorite writers, Frederick Buechner. Do you hear that, Tom, Frederick Buechner? Yep, I know he likes Frederick Buechner. He's a good Presbyterian. Buechner gives us two definitions. First, he tells us that in God's holy flirtation with the world, God occasionally drops a handkerchief. These handkerchiefs are called saints. Now, I like that one. I like that one uh, a lot because it really says a lot of when I see and I look out at my friends and my people and I, and I see sainthood in them in my own way. The second definite definition of a saint that Buechner gives goes like this. To be a saint is, not, is to live not with hands clenched to grasp, to strike, to hold tight to a life that is slipping away the more tightly we hold it, but it is to live with hands stretched out, both to give and to receive with gladness. To be a saint is to work and weep for the broken and suffering of the world. But it is also to be strangely light of heart in the knowledge that there is something greater than the world that mends and renews. Maybe more than anything else, to be a saint is to know joy. Not happiness that comes and goes with the moments that occasion it, but joy that is always there like an underground spring, no matter how dark or terrible the night. To be a saint is to live a life that is always giving itself away and whose joy is always full. I really like this definition because it, it includes all of us as saints and our hopes and our dreams in life. Yes, it allows our own participation in the world as saints and as handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs, so I should say, in the kingdom of God. And just to do it over one more time, I'll give you another definition, even though I shouldn't. I should have stopped right there, but I'll do it anyway. I can't help myself. According to the Catechism of the Book of Common Prayer, it says... To be a member of the communion of saints, the whole family of God, the living and the dead, those whom we love and those whom we even hurt, are bound together in Christ by sacrament, prayer, and praise. This tells us that we, each and every one of us, each and every one of us are children in the family of God, and yes, we are all saints. We were created as saints. We were born as saints. And we were meant to be saints. We may goof up lots like I do, but still, we are saints. We are children. Just as that song would talk to us about and that we just sang. Both the living and the dead, we, those who we love and even those whom we hurt, we are all bound together. We are bound together in this church, in this community, and beyond. We are bound together as saints. As I thought about it, this small parish has known a great many handkerchiefs of God in its day, 50 years now. Some have been clergy, I suppose, but probably as many as, not as many as we would like. But most, in reality, have been laity. These people built selfishly this beautiful church with their own hands back in 1971 from lumber that was strewn around the area. Others cooked meal after meal for hundreds of members of town folk and members, as I said, through the years. Others taught classes about Christ and, and God's kingdom on earth. Others took care of thousands of people throughout this area merely because they were hungry and they had no place to stay or they had no utilities. This church was, has been there. The sainthood has been there. First from a grocery cart in, a long, in the log house, and then from a growing pantry. And as I thought about it, even those who came for food, the people who came for food were also saints. And they often gave more to us than we ever gave to them. Still, there were others who spent hour after hour designing and planting the sacred garden. They also were and are saints. 
Others participated each Sunday and during special services. Yes, saints, each and every one of them. And yes, there were even others who just came to worship and sat quietly in their pews, much like today, Sunday after Sunday. They were saints. They didn't say much, but their presence was always felt. Many of you still come to our pews, along with the many visiting saints from other places and other towns and other churches who still come each week and fill these pews. We would be negligent if we fail to remember the handkerchiefs or the saints who we have lost since the last All Saints Day through, day, through death, and perhaps longer. They are still saints, but their realm, I suppose, has expanded some. All of you may know them no more than the saints I name here today. Please add your own saint, if I miss them, at the end of my list. God really doesn't care about who's talking. There is nothing special after all to my voice. It's just a voice that God has given me. Here are the saints that I know, that I remember from this year. Again, add some for yourself if I miss. Martha Sue Hutchins, Paul Howell Sr., Cliff Eves, Tina Lanham, Lucy Folks, Bernice Van Appledorn, Karen Pence, Tookie Anderson, Gary Weldon, Buddy Crabtree, Jeremy Enger, Elizabeth Wozni. Are there others that you'd like to mention? We'll take a moment and let you add your name. and Isabel Moody, who, who celebrates her hundredth with you. Each of these people did some great things, and they undoubtedly did some things that weren't so great. That's the nature of sainthood. They're all human. We're all human. But each of the saints is bound together sacrament, prayer, and praise as handkerchiefs. My father, we gather here, my friends rather, we gather here today to celebrate the saints. But we are not alone. And we are, and we are here with the saints who have passed before us. When we come to communion, I have, have had this vision before, but as we come to the, to the altar, we oftentimes kneel, and sometimes we stand if we need to. And we sit there and we think that this communion is just for me. It's not just for me. It's for the saints that are sitting or are kneeling or however next to you. The saints, the communion of saints. And not only that, we remember and we look and we can see it, the, those that have gone before us are gathered with us, the saints that have gone before. The communion of saints is a majestic thing, much broader than just you and I. It includes everyone, those that have come and those that have gone, but they are here. And they are here as we take the sacrament of communion. And so for me, that's one of my special things. So when I look into your eyes, I'm not only seeing you, but I'm seeing saints that have gone long ago and some that are still here because I see it in your face and I see it in all of your face. It happens for me. Enough for that. And lastly, all of us need to take a moment and just, as I said, look around the church. Believe it or not, your fellow saints are seated right next to you. Yes, Alice, Frank's there. <laughs> Where's, uh, and Phyllis, Wayne's there, and I could go on. There's Paul and, and, and Charlotte, and, and definitely Carl and Katie, and I, I'll stop here. Vicki and Victoria, uh, it's, it gets beyond my, my recognition, it's so big. So go ahead sometime today. Take some time. Think about the saints. 
They really are important. Saints of God. And you, yes, you, and even me are included in the number. Believe it or not, it's true. We are all saints of God, all of us. Love forever and a day. Amen. Alleluia. My friends, would you please stand and let us reaffirm uh, our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is and even unseen. We believe in the Holy Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Join me in the prayers of the people for Form 2, found on page 385 in your red book. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, presiding Bishop Michael, Bishop Glenda, Father Bill, seminarian Sherry, and missionaries overseas. For this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers Today, remembering especially Marquita Crane, Reese Fitzgerald, Becky Davis, Chip Mann, Sam, Katie Hooks, Wesley and Kat Griffith, Wes Scott, Beth Ann, Stanley Bow, Alfred and Jean Phillips, Eleanor Teverino and Brothers, Howard Hanna, Joshua, Jonathan, Tom, Frank, Forsyth White, Rosalie Shipp, Jimmy Cash, Joanne Glover, Ricky Golson, Betty and Herb, Donna Frost, Derek Williams, Sam Smith, Tom Benton, 
Joan and Jim Byram, Valerie Fleming, our Haitian student Lovely, and families of all who, those who have lost loved ones. I ask your thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, Lucy Holland, Lanier Isom, and Mike Hoagland. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that, you, that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our confession is found on page 360 of our Book of Common Prayer. Page 360 of our Book of Common Prayer, the red book in front of you. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. So with you. himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Just to note, all of you are more than welcome to come and receive communion at St. Joseph's. You're all children of God and we welcome you to come and to serve. We will do it as we call in a sanction. I think that's the right word. Anyway, you pour, put, put in, put, put, take it like that, dip it in there, and then eat it. And then the wine will come. You got it. <laughs> you get confused here. Uh, our service continues with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give God thanks and praise. praise. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, <clears throat> Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life and you made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subjects to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. <clears throat> On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask through your son jesus christ by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen, amen. and now as our savior and now as our savior christ has taught us we are bold to say our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. My friends, my sisters and brothers, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with each and every one of you this All Saints Day and every All Saints Day going on into the eternity. Amen.